guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's kick off some 4th of July crafting. Stay tuned. So welcome to all of you. I really do appreciate you being here. And I want to give a big old thank you to all of the members of my monthly club. You guys, month in and month out, voluntarily help to support this channel. And you guys help to make it possible for me to continue to bring you innovative and fun projects. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So today we are going to kick off some fun 4th of July crafting. And I know that not everyone is here in the U.S. and not everyone is celebrating the 4th of July as a holiday, but the crafting that we're going to be doing will truly be any season, any reason, any gender. So it doesn't necessarily have to be for the 4th of July. Just change those papers and make it whatever you want it to be. Here's what we're going to be making today. I'm going to be having a small backyard barbecue on the 4th of July, and we will have people over for the first time in over a year. So I wanted to decorate in a way that would be fun and festive. So I am making jumbo rosettes. You would go to the store and pay so much money for these, but I am going to show you guys just how easy they are to make. And remember, any season, any reason, any gender, this is themed for the 4th of July, but I'm sure that you guys can imagine it for so many different reasons. So y'all know what time it is? It's time to get started. All right, y'all, so here's a closer look at that 12 inch rosette. It is large. And a lot of times, some of us are intimidated by making the larger rosettes. And you shouldn't be, because all you're doing is working with larger pieces of paper. So I'm making some of these to use for my own 4th of July celebration. And I pray that it doesn't rain, because I am so looking forward to having people over for the first time in a very long time. Now I have themed this for the 4th of July because I am a US citizen and I'm a proud American. However, I do know that everyone watching me is not from the US, but you can take this idea and apply it to any national holidays or any national celebrations that you have in your home country that you might want to decorate for. So there's not a whole lot to this. It's going to be very quick and you're going to see just how easy it is to make these. All right, so what we're going to need to make our project are three pieces of 12 by 12. This is a lightweight cardstock, and this is just some lightweight scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. Now, it starts out feeling kind of lightweight. When we build it up and add this piece to it, we add this piece to the back so that we can mount it to the wall if we have some command strip uh, mounting tape, and we sandwich it in between these. It's actually pretty sturdy. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and I'm going to go ahead and score all three sheets at half an inch all the way across. So every half of an inch, I'm going to make a score. And I'm doing this on all of my sheets. So I'm going to do this one with you guys and I'll do the other two off camera because I'll be doing the exact same thing, which is making top to bottom scores every half inch across my 12 by 12. All right, and I'm almost done with this piece. So this is one piece of the 12 by 12. This is the sheet that will go on top of the large rosette. So I'm going to go ahead and take these two sheets and score them, and then I'll be right back. All right, okay. guys, so when you have all of your scores running across your 12 by 12 inch paper, and I've turned it over so that you can see those scores, we're going to take it and place it in our trimmer, and we're going to trim that 12 by 12 in half Make sure you trim it with your lines running this way, and we're going to trim it down to six. So what I could have done on the red, white, and blue flag paper is I could have gone ahead and just fold it all the way across, which is exactly what I'm going to do on this piece, because this will save me from having to do a whole lot of folding. So before you actually do any trimming, go ahead and do your folds. And 
And then once you get halfway through, I like to just go to the other end, especially if I'm working with a large sheet, because that helps to make sure that I've got everything nice and straight. Sometimes when you're working with a full sheet like this and you're doing the accordion fold, once you get towards the middle, you can start to go off. So if you just go from end to end doing those folds, you can avoid having that happen. So now I have this accordion folded 12 by 12, and now I can just stretch it out because when I get ready to actually put it back together, I've already got the folds and that's going to make it a whole lot easier for me to get all three pieces nicely folded. And when I say three pieces, we're going to take our 12 by 12 and we're going to reduce it to three four inch strips. So now I'll just move it over to four. And I'm going to stretch it just to make sure I have it right. And then I'll cut. So now I have my three four inch strips. On this piece, I have already accordion folded the whole 12 by 12. So I'm just going to stretch it out, place it in my trimmer and go ahead and reduce it to six. And because I have those accordion folds already in these pieces, I'm saving myself just a little bit of time. So I am going to go ahead and bring back those accordion folds. Then I'm going to make it very tight. And by making it tight, what I mean is once I get all of my folds in place, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this and just squeeze it so that it's tight like that. And now I'll just take these and accordion fold. Super simple. And then I'm going to come to the other end because I don't want it to go off once I get towards the middle. I want to try to keep my folds as straight as possible. And then one thing that I forgot to mention is when you are folding, make sure that you're folding one going up and one going down. If you don't, you can fix that just by trimming off one edge to make sure that they're going in opposite directions. But if you start off with one up, one down, that just makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now that we have all of our pieces accordion folded, I am going to bring in my reptile glue and I am simply going to place some glue on one end. So I have this piece that is pointing out. I'll take that piece and I'm going to join it to a piece that's going down. So I'm just going to take that and join these two. Try to get them straight. And then this end is going up. So I'll take this end that's going down Add my glue. And then I'll take this piece, add my glue, and join it to this piece. Don't be intimidated by the size of your rosette because it's all the same. It's the same process. So I'm going to take this piece, add my glue on that end, and then I'll just loop it around and join it on this end. Now I'm just going to go back when I make a rosette, I always go back 
and condense it like this because basically all I'm doing is getting it ready to take that rosette shape. And I'm just making it smaller and easier to handle. So I'm just going to go all the way around And then I'll get some of this because I'm running out of space. So now we've condensed it just a little bit. It's large. So for the larger rosettes, if you just take your hand, go on the inside and force it down. Then you have your large rosette. And I'll do it one more time. So we'll have it standing up just like a lampshade. Take your hands, put them on the side, and just bring it in and force it down. That's all you have to do. So now I'm just going to bring in my two chipboard squares and my hot glue gun, and I am just going to place some hot glue. And I'll place that piece of chipboard right there. Give that a moment just to set up. Now I can flip it over. I'll take my hot glue, place some more hot glue, add this backer piece, and sandwich that rosette in between those two pieces of chipboard. And now you have an awesome rosette that you could decorate just like this, but we are going to add another layer to this just to give it some dimension. But wasn't that easy on making a large jumbo rosette? So I'm going to take this, set it to the side, and we're going to go ahead and bring these pieces back in. And because I have already pre-scored and accordion folded, I can save myself some steps. So I'm just going to squeeze that nice and tight. Do the same thing here. Squeeze it nice and tight. And then we'll do this one. Now, when I was scoring this, I was scoring all of these in the same direction. So all of them are pointing down. And this is a great example to show you guys what I mean about just making one point up. All I'm going to do is clip off that end and turn it into this up, this down. So I'm going to take my glue, place my glue on that piece, and then I'll take this piece and we will just join it to that one. Make sure I get that nice and stuck. And then I'll take this piece, but I have two ends going down. So I am going to go ahead and trim away one piece. Add my glue. And get those two pieces stuck together. Then I can join these two ends, but they're both pointing down. So again, I am just going to remove one end. And now that piece is pointing up. I'll take my glue. We're going to get that nice and stuck. And so now I can take my rosette and I am just going to start squeezing it in, going all the way around because that just makes it easier for me to manage. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but I have just found that it helps me to be able to get a smaller piece to work with. So now that I've done that, we can again take our hands because it's a larger piece and force it down and squeeze it in. It really is as simple as I just showed you. So now I'm going to take my glue 
put my glue around that circle. Then I'm going to take one of my little chipboard scraps, place it right there. Then I'll flip this over, take a little more glue, take one more piece of my scrap chipboard and get that stuck. And so now we'll bring this piece in and we're going to attach it to this piece. So I am going to use my wet glue because I might have to do some adjusting and moving around and the hot glue will make it stick a lot quicker and I won't be able to move it around. And what I'm trying to do is just to make sure that I have this as centered as possible. Sometimes when you're working with patterns like this and polka dots in particular, It'll play tricks on the eyes and it'll look centered and it's not, or it'll look off centered when it's really centered. So now that I have that piece right there, I am going to leave that alone and consider it centered. So now I'm just going to take one of my stickers and I'm not even going to back this with any type of chipboard. And I am going to take the sticker that says 4th of July. I absolutely love how this turned out and you guys saw how easy it was. Sometimes we let the size of something intimidate us. We see those large jumbo rosettes and we think that we can't make them. Yes, you can because they are so simple and it's a great way to decorate for any event that you might be having. All you have to do is get some papers that coordinate well with your theme and you can make these rosettes and they become instant upscale decorations for any event. So I am going to bring that first one back in because I want you guys to see how gorgeous these are. And these are easily mounted to the wall with some of those command strip type products because with those you can mount it and remove it and it doesn't do any damage to the surface. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed these super jumbo rosettes. If you have liked this project, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.